Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Indigo Tarot Odyssey. Thank all you styling beauties for all your beautiful messages and comments. That is my favorite part of the day when I wake up or right before I go to bed and I have a moment to go through everything. And I will always, always, it, nothing's ever written in vain by you guys. I go through every single comment and I try my best to actually give um, a written response, if not just an icon if I'm running late on time. But I actually read every single comment. That's my favorite thing. That's the whole reason I really do this is to connect with you guys, see how you're doing, see how your prosperity, your abundance, your heart chakras are doing, you know, because you guys are all an amazing, amazing amount of you guys are putting your laws of attraction into um, action as well as your manifestations and love is coming through your money, your jobs, all these beautiful, beautiful prospects. And it really doesn't take much. It just takes that slight shift of perspective, knowing we're energy and that we are our thoughts. And that's what we're going to focus on. We want what's best for ourselves. So we're never going to hearken back on the past. That does zero, right? When we, regret does nothing, fear does nothing. Um, guilt does zero. It wastes our time. Um, we just want to usher in love, peace, calmness, you know what I mean? Um, just just be loving great people, you know what I mean? It's really great. I love it. We're going to be cool. And I had a really good day. I got to chill out and relax and take it easy today. And I went after school, me and my son went to the beach and we had our lunch. It was very lovely. So yeah, Ian and I were just discussing some topics because I was doing a lot of research from the man's point of view in terms of love and what they find desirable and what they find of high value in a woman and what would make them pursue a woman and all that stuff. So we'll get to that. I'll probably do a video, a series on those tomorrow, but I'm going to do um, uh, probably a part one. This is going to be part one of this and it's... Um, a light worker's guide to love and it's basically we're starting with ourselves okay because once we realize that we've cleared those chakras we are not reaching in the back because the biggest love blocker is hanging on to old regrets slights um negative feeling towards relationships men women whatever because when our our most dominant thought is what receives the most energy and what we're manifesting right so we just simply let that fall away doesn't serve us anymore it's not any good and it's like isn't it's half of the hollywood movies isn't it like some guy has a evil girlfriend or vice versa and then they find the perfect one right but um that's usually after you see too like their self-acceptance and they get um they get some kind of soul purpose that they're doing and it's, it's sometimes it's very endearing working with the elderly working with animals whatever gets them back in touch with themselves which is so lovely so there's that so yeah this is going to be part one and um, we're going to start and we're going to do it with um the oracle the mystic mystical sh shaman oracle guides because i love these and they're very heartfelt and touching and i laid out a few just for the beginning so they look so gorgeous and just to let you guys know too if you didn't go on the other video everything now that i wear all my rings and the crowns and everything right here i put them up there's one of each left of everything it's in my etsy store which is the links below because so many of you are like where did you get that and get this and that but I mean, when I was setting up props and just buying things for the show, it's like it came from many different areas um, from eBay auctions that, of course, wouldn't still be here and stuff like that. So, yeah, if you hit up Etsy, my link below, you can um, check them out. Everything's listed with the sizes as well. You guys are so cute. You like sparkly, fun things, too. Yeah, it's funny. I don't don't you go through phases where one time's like you're a real heavy ring person, a real heavy bracelet person. Depends like uh, um, accessories. It's funny. It's, they've always been important to me because you can just wear a gray t-shirt and then um, that doesn't even matter, right? If you have a beautiful necklace or, of course, a crown. There we go. And we'll, we're just going to do a two-side picker card because I know you guys really like those and I want you to um, have choice in that. So here can be, again, we'll, we'll use the rings. We'll use this beautiful... Um, lab created sapphire i love this ring so much but again i have just such a cra crazy treasure trope and then the other one will be citrine i love this one too this is these are this is genuine it's so gorgeous and these are in the store as well so that's number one number two so again this is going to be the first part of um a light worker's guide to love there are little messages and things that um kind of stir our day right sometimes we go through little indignities in love and and the pursuit of it or people after us that get so agitating that sometimes we just want to give up right i mean yes we want to look 
attractive. We want to smell attractive. We want to go through this and that. But and then there there is a limit and firm boundaries of what kind of attention you want to endure too, right? Nobody wants some lecherous stuff. Like I've never been one for uber tight clothes or miniature stuff because I remember once just I was going to an occasion. I was in an elevator with just a whole bunch of men and. It was just so lecherous I could feel the energy and I was like ew and I never really wanted to garner that kind of attention so there's a happy medium and there's all these things you know what I mean it's like it's crazy how stuff that can be um, very charming to one woman can be offensive to another as well okay so it's gonna be group one is gonna be the um, sapphire so let's see what's going on in this group right now Ooh, we're gonna start with the tree of life isn't that beautiful did any of you guys see Avatar? That tree in that movie was everything. I lost my mind for like six years over that tree. Like every tree I'd look at, I'd be like, oh. I always loved trees, but that tree, oh my gosh. I want to watch that again. I'm going to watch that again soon. It was so beautiful. So let's see what it has to say. And this is, I call it the light, um, we're calling it the light worker's guide to love because it, the essence of it is starting with ourselves completely, right? When we're balanced and whole, we attract a type of person. So I've been studying the last few days, all these, um, these men that are on YouTube and other experts and so-called experts that, um, discuss what really attracts them to women, what repels them, what does things. And if you guys stick through to the end, right after we do this, it's not going to be long. It's only going to be like a 10, 15 minute video. I'll go over the top 10 things. And some were surprising. I was like, wow, because we, one is um, a more refined older gentleman and one is a really fun but together mid 20 something guy that I, I like to get this information from. They ask all their friends but it was really interesting so we'll go over that after too because I'm sure you guys are curious. I was. I was like what's going on? Okay so the tree of life. The tree of life is sacred symbol throughout the Americas. Its deep roots reach into the lower world and unconscious while its branches reach to the heavens, a source of destiny to be whole in your life's journey. It is important to have deep roots and high branches. A tall tree with shallow roots falls in the first wind, but a tree with deep roots can weather any storm. Now what that speaks to in the term of love, of course, is we are not going to be superficial when we go out into the world, are we? When we meet people, we want to make connections and to make true, rich connections, we dig deep. We ask about their family. We ask where they were brought up. What are their favorite foods? What's important to them? What are their hobbies and their loves and their joys, right? That's how we're connecting and finding love on every level, right? It's a journey that we all take and light workers know that right away when people have fear of discussing themselves because some people carry around shame for whatever reason fear for whatever reason and we're here to help break through all that because all that is is an ingrained notion in your subconscious that somebody planted there a teacher a parent a brother a sister an obnoxious neighbor something like that that's not your memory that's not who you are you're not who you were when you were 5 8 15 17 you are not that mood you were in that where nobody liked you that day because you were grouchy you're not that um inconsistency that you were on your sports team where you couldn't hit home runs any of those things that stick in your craw that make you not be aware to the present and the love that's around you're not any of those things so the invitation is to find health and balance in your life reflect on how you dance with your actions your thoughts and your feelings if you are too much in your thinking head or in the world of fantasies and daydreaming and you connect more with your roots and your physical body if you are caught in the mechanical doing of what you are feeling is stuck you're not able to imagine a better life for yourself open yourself and be inspired by the heavens let your roots and branches be aligned with your heart's longings for sure and that's really just doing your true purpose and your true purpose can be whatever you're doing that you get joy out of that moment you know what i mean it's not some lifelong commitment it can be a temporary hobby that brings you creative joy you know what i mean Lots of times when people say soul's calling or um, your purpose in life, it, it doesn't have to be some magical thing that all of a sudden hits you. Sometimes you're just making slow progress towards that by doing things you really enjoy. Sitting in a hammock, reading a book, um, petting your animals, watching a sunset. I get the weirdest, best kick out of looking at mushrooms in nature. You know what I mean? I find them so fascinating. I love to feel the velvety underside of them. Like I've freaking flip out over mushrooms 
almost like a spazoid. I just love them. But you know what I mean? Those little joyful things like you had when you were a child with a child, child's heart, right? And joy because you're using one of your senses so fully. Like nothing feels like that underside of a mushroom, right? That velvety, like accordion. It's amazing, right? Oh, that's beautiful. So let's see what else you guys have going for you over here. Ooh, water. Yeah, I love... I love being by water, and I actually was compelled. If 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 Hagen hadn't mentioned, let's go to the beach and eat our lunch, I think I would have driven there because I felt the need. I find it very cleansing and balancing, right? So the essence is water symbolizes purification, regeneration, birth, revival, cleansing, and it signifies an evolutionary shift from former self to new self. Many myths around the world speak of the great flood and the new life that is revealed after a deluge. Water begins without boundaries then as soon as form has separated itself from water it comes under the laws of time and life thus acquiring limitations so the imitation when water arrives you're invited to watch your emotions know they are going to be changeable and do not settle on a conclusion at this time if you feel joy feel it fully if you feel sad allow sadness to move through you water invites you to see the ebb and flow of events that and it says you can trust and you can ride the wave of opportunity when it arises. Natural is here. Go with it. Absolutely, right? We're not trying to mask sadness. We're not trying to repress joy. We're letting all our natural inclinations and feelings to just ride through us and feel them fully and then understand where they come from. So again, that's how we're acquiring and magnetizing in love because we are in touch with our inner selves, we know that we are emotional beings, right? We know we're all electrical circuitry and sometimes it vibrates very high and um, oscillates very high and then other times it's in a very restful state. Again, and water is very cleansing. So like anytime too where you're in a hot shower, if you have a dry brush, use that. And really feel the water on your skin. There's, that's why there's so much... Um, you know, water therapy and stuff because it's very soothing and calming. So yeah, and that puts you in a very receptive state for love as well. When you're balanced and relaxed, you can see a lot clearer, see others' intentions, see your intentions, motives, all those things, right? So you're much more aware of what's going on. Okay, so we'll do one more for group one because I love that. I love tree and water. I just like to... Ooh, the vision quest. Look at the beauty in this card. Whoa. Wow, look at that. So unbelievably beautiful. I haven't seen that card yet. I haven't seen every card in this deck because um, sometimes they stick together. So that's the first time I've seen that. The essence is in the vision quest, you face your fear, you embrace your mor mortality, and you meet face to face with spirit. When we feel stagnant, a vision quest brings our lives into perspective. We realize our flaws, our potentials, and our opportunities in life that we are now being offered. We remain on a vision quest until we find the key to open the new door or write the new chapter in our lives. I love this. So you can find clarity by spending time alone in nature. Get off the couch and away from your desk and go outside. The spirit helps those who helps themselves. So set your intention and ask nature for a guiding vision of your life. And I cannot stipulate this high enough. I was indoors most of the day or in my car. So I was getting a little, um, I don't even know the word. I guess agitated yet yeah, other drivers and as soon as we got to the ocean which is psh, two roads away and went and had our lunch there it just was like a the biggest breath of fresh air there was a million different colors of white and gray and blue in the sky because it was like just pre-storm so it was so so beautiful so elements are there to soothe us you know what i mean to soothe and speak to us so absolutely out in nature once we're in touch with our feelings and we know what we want because we're in that nice um, equilibrium, receptive state, all those things, we, be we become loving and light. You know what I mean? We are light beings and we are trying to absorb the best out of life and get the highest frequency and nature provides that for us. So get out on that nature walk. You're going to feel so, so good. So that's you guys. Again, if you want to um, click to the end, I'll have, or if you want to watch through or click to the end, I'm going to have the 10... 10 most um, attractive things to men because I thought it was so cute if you're women and I'm sure this actually can be flipped and pertained on both sides and again all my links are below if you guys need a private read don't forget to press like and subscribe and that little bell near subscribe so you'll get all the um, 
notifications of the new videos. Okay, so we're going to go on to number two. Ooh, thunder. Ooh, look at the colors. Ugh. Colors, I love color therapy. If I am wigging out for any um, reason or I'm overloaded with too many messages, feelings, or I, I just feel like everything's oscillating too high, I'll do color therapy. I'll look at my paintings. I'll look at cards like these. Earth tones, absolutely adore earth tones, jewel tones, rich, dark colors, and I'll immediately start to ground out and be calm. That's another thing, you guys, too, for in terms of when you're trying to balance yourself and um, get in touch with what you deserve and with what you think you deserve, which is everything in terms of love and what you want to bring in, stare at colors that help you. Um, the top three are energizing, red, orange, yellow. Those are energizing and mood lifts. If you need to calm down, the blues and greens are very calming. If you want to go into the more spiritual and the darker purples, I love to stare at dark purple. It just zones me out into a very calm thing. Again, yeah, it's a very meditative thing, color therapy. Why do you think some paintings move people to spend millions on them, right? It is the colors and the motions of the colors that um, just captivate someone. Okay, so let's see what Thunder has to say. The essence is legends that speak of great thunder beings who live in the sky and call for your attention when the great occurrences are meant to happen in the world. They warn when tensions in a situation are called upon to be released. Their presence in your reading reminds you of the dramatic moments in life that change everything. Both awesome and frightening, when the thunder arrives it is also a wake-up call, one that you will not soon forget. The invitation is that when thunder comes into your reading, it refers to a big dramatic change that feels like the hurt of a wild bison on the run. You feel it right through your bones and you know that you are powerless to influence whatever events have set it in motion. This is a time to be prepared for anything. Your life's an adventure, a wonderful opportunity everywhere is arriving. The trick is to learn to run with them. Qualities that you need now more than ever are flexibility, dexterity, and willingness to experience it all without dictating from where or when these opportunities will come. Your destiny is arriving. Be ready. And this is what we talk about daily, right? That we have the flexibility to uh, accept life's changes and challenges and see it as an adventure, right? And all the wonderful opportunities that are right there, we're all manifesting. You guys are. I hear it in every single email and um, comment i mean things are just when you're flexible and ready and you see it that way with those eyes that higher perspective of wow i get to learn things and go places it is a dream for you life is a lovely life is but a dream seriously you're you're forget fear it does zero oh, look at this upper world wow this is a great great grouping so let's see Wow, beautiful. Look at the blue. That's another thing, you guys. I always find a mix of blues is the most soothing of all the colors. So if you're ever just feeling um, overstimulated, stare at mixes of blues. Or you go on YouTube and, and watch one of the things of the running ocean water and waterfalls. Chills right out. So let's see what the upper world is doing. Angels, divine helpers, and the ancient ones are all varieties of luminous beings that populate the upper world. It is a place where you go to retrieve your destiny and find out who you will become, discover your great potentials and undreamt of possibilities. It is also the place where the spirits of the dead arrive when they complete their journey into the light. Again, this is definitely the light worker's guide to love because you learn from the ancient ones, our divine helpers and our angels, right? We learn self-love. We learn acceptance. We love love. We learn love of the world, each other, and all those animals, of course, children, everything that creates magic in our world, right? When you just see those things, you're, you feel the warmth, right? You feel like a blanket, uh, like an electric blanket wrapped around you because we know that we are protected and loved by these divine beings as well. So the invitation is the upper world is calling you to step into your fully realized self, clear distractions away from you so you can move into a higher destiny. Do not fall to the temptation to craft a slightly more improved version of yourself. What you perceive as a problem or an obstacle is in fact an irritation you need to take the great leap that's what it is you feel agitated because you need to just let go and let god right remember you cannot cross the grand canyon in two small jumps very very profound and simple right it is one of those things where we know we are surrounded by um energetic light beings and things that help us they help us prosper they help us be abundant they help us shift our energies perspectives i mean just think of the the miracle of just childbirth and all that right i mean 
it's so profound and it's so lovely and it invokes such a strong sense of love and balance in me when I think about it. But those of you that are moms, really, the first time you saw your child, wasn't it just like that there's nothing ever, ever that comes close to that. It's amazing. And that's really when I felt real presence of, um, you know, angels and guides all around for sure and wild woman. This is all of us. Let's get a wild woman. Do, 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 do. Six to two. Yeah. Yes. You ever do that? Like you're the person that comes into a room or a meeting and you just see your boss is like, oh shit, here she comes. And you're like, oh yes, it's on. Like I've always been the one that questions stuff and stands up when shit is hairy or wrong and they know that and I remember just seeing a couple of times when I walk into a room and, and, and one of my bosses face if there was a problem and it needed a resolution or whatever and I felt like I needed to intervene just the look on their face I would feel like the wild woman you know what I mean because it was that look of fear respect but shit's about to go down but you have to be that person right we need people that stand up we need people to protect the oceans we need people to protect our air source our children things like that who else is going to do this hmm i don't know i hope it's us so the essence is when the wild woman dances into your reading she reminds you the essence of authenticity and freedom Divested of all social constraints and cultural conformity, the wild woman holds up a mirror to your essential self, the true essence of who you are and what you're meant to become. Absolutely 100%. And so many of you are right now just growing into this. It's tremendous. She is a reminder of the bright light within each of us that gets dimmed by the restrictions imposed upon us by the expectations of society. She reminds us that in order to be fully present in life, we must uncover the light and let it shine brightly, regardless of the perceived consequences. So the invitation is, when the wild woman comes to dance in your reading, you're invited to shine brightly and know that your true self is being called out to engage in the world. It's a symbol that your long-held dream is beginning to take root and wants to be exposed. So beautiful. Your authentic self doesn't fit in a box. It needs the freedom to shine. It's time to have courage and step into the light. The wild woman says, shine bright, dance with abandon, be yourself, and let the great spirit decide what happens. You'll be happy you did. Absolutely. And this is so many for like my sensates too. Stephanie, Madison, all you beauties out there. Kumari. You guys all know a lot of you are super into the esoteric. A lot of you are breaking into YouTube, into the healing fields, the energy work, all that stuff. This is your call of your wild woman going, you know you don't fit in a box. You know you're not a beige. You hold up a mirror to your, your real self, right? Your true essence and it's ready to come out. That's why we have that uncomfortable phase of where you just have to bust out into it, right? You're just going to shine brightly and dance with abandon. When you're yourself and you're your beautiful, authentic self, everything just flows naturally. It comes to you naturally. Um, you are a joy to be around. You have an open heart and an open mind. And you sincerely, like me, just want other people to revel, grow, expand, and be self-actualized because I could care less what any single thing in person on this planet thinks of me, but only to the extent that how I treat them, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care what they think of my personal taste, how I look or anything like that because I'm always, I'm never going to change. I'm always going to be me to that extent, but I do care how I treat others and um, elevate the vibration of a room or a place because it should always be for the good. I will never compete with others and try to bring them down to elevate myself especially i find women so strong and empowering and beautiful like my favorite singer is pink i go absolutely nuts for her. pink is my queen and and i'll meet her soon i'm sh i'm certain of that and i just love the way she is not only just her music and, and sarah barry ellis too with that i want to see you be brave they're just beautiful and my heart like goes mad when I hear that music you know what I mean I love you and they are wild women and they're amazing right Katy Perry too I love love the hell out of her she's a cool little maverick so anyway you guys that's you guys so I'm so excited for everybody and this is going to be part one and then soon probably tomorrow we'll do a part two because it's basically we're receiving love the second we are our true selves and we are our true selves when we are in nature when we are our natural wild woman self when we break out of that um weird box that we think others have to perceive us as a certain way then when you know it's well it's like the tr the lindy the lindy the cindy lopper song true colors i see your true colors shining through that's exactly what it is your essence your spirituality your your um 
grasp of the upper world and the spiritual and the healing arts and all those things that everybody has these capabilities and they're engaging in right now so i love you guys to death amazing amazing so um if you're new don't forget to press like and subscribe do it subscribe and hit that hit the button next to it so you get the little bells and warnings and don't forget to visit my etsy shop now you guys all the rings and crowns and stuff are in there because you guys have been asking and asking so i finally was able to transfer stuff over there today and list it for you but remember this i mean if we can pull one thing out of this to really remember be your true self remember your guides and angels are always helping you to be yourself you know what i mean it's kind of like a resurrection of the child in you that was just happy, hopeful, and free, right? That's what we're going for. Happy, hopeful, and free.